September is a transitional month. There's still plenty of sunlight to enjoy, but that abundance is about to come up short as we go into autumn. The question is, can wind power put a dent in the now very high electricity prices? If you haven't watched my previous videos, hello, I'm Anthony. I commissioned a nine kilowatt solar panel array here in Aberdeenshire last November. It consists of 28 solar panels on two roof planes of my bungalow. Each solar panel is connected to a solar optimizer and all of those are connected to a solar edge eight kilowatt inverter. Surplus power from that inverter will go into uh, my hot water tank via a hot water controller. And lately, I've uh, now added an additional Tesla Model 3, and that takes in quite a lot more additional surplus power. Solar power in September has performed quite well. We've had quite a fair mix of weather, but bright sunny days seem to feature more sun strongly than they did in August. That said, we also had a fair number of uh, cloudy and very rainy periods as well. Compared to March, solar power generation was very similar. We generated 629 kilowatt hours of electricity. 76% of our electricity consumed came from our solar panels and only 93 kilowatt hours came from the grid. Now that's less than half the electricity that I consumed from the grid before I commissioned these solar panels. And when you consider that I'm now charging up an electric car as well, that's something quite remarkable. Even more remarkable is the fact that we exported three times as much electricity as we imported. That's 337 kilowatt hours going to the grid. Now the best day so far in September was the 1st of September. We generated just over 34 kilowatt hours of electricity. That was a day of bright sunny weather uh, mixed in with uh, some clouds throughout the day as well. By contrast, the worst day previously, that was the 27th of September. Now, today, the last day, the 30th of September, I reckon that's gonna be the last, the, the worst day. Five kilowatt hours is what I'm predicting for today. It's been heavy cloud and rain in the morning, and it's only just now in the late afternoon that we're starting to see some brightening up of the weather. Now, as mentioned before, this month saw the arrival of a Tesla Model 3 on the 13th of September. And the vast majority of the miles driven so far have been delivered by my solar panels on my rooftop. When you consider that it's the end of September and I managed to fully charge my car by midweek. That's quite remarkable, especially considering Monday, the 27th of September, and today have been, have been really badly performing days. Now, electricity prices have dominated the, the news this month. And I'm going to cut to my doppelganger in the studio to explain a little bit more about uh, what that means for my household. So in the last month, I told you all that I signed up to the Octopus Agile Tariff. And I wanna show you what the impact of that has been in terms of revenue. What I've got here is the uh, data for June. And as you can see, we generated 880 kilowatt hours of electricity for export. That export was worth just under 40 pounds. Now, if we have a look at August, we generated far less electricity for export, but we were on the Octopus Agile tariff at that point. And the consequence of that was that the price of uh, electricity exported was much higher. For August, we generated just under 60 pounds worth of revenue. That's pretty good. However, September is even more astonishing. Have a look at have a look at this here so far i mean it's the 27th of september 
I've also got an electric car, so there's a lot less export being generated in the later months. 334 kilowatt hours of electricity. And yet, we generated more export value in September compared to June. 65 pounds worth so far. That is astonishing. What's going on? Let's have a look. Yeah. So this is a graph of the Octopus Agile price um, for import since the beginning of April last year. And as you can see, the average price, the yellow line here, has uh, increased from between uh, eight pence per kilowatt hour, and it's gone all the way up. And now it's just under the price cap of 35 pence per kilowatt hour. That's just an average daily price. That's not the maximum price or the minimum price. Uh, you can see the minimum price, we had negative prices from time to time, quite a, a fair number of them in 2020. Um, now the minimum prices are a lot less frequent. So what's going on? Uh, why are the prices uh, going up so much? So what we've got here is a chart which uh, describes the energy mix for the whole of the UK's uh, electricity generation. As you can see, gas makes up the lion's share of all of the electricity generated for 2020. Wind power, on the other hand, is the second biggest uh, share of electricity, 24%. Now, what's happened over the last year is that the price of gas has just shot up, especially in September. Now, if we then have a look at this graph here, this is a graph for the uh, whole year um, from September last year into uh, September this year. And you can see over the winter time, uh, wind power uh, makes up a, a sizable chunk of the uh, electricity generation mix. But over summertime, wind power makes up a much smaller proportion of the energy uh, mix. And in the beginning of September, we had uh, very slack winds indeed. And combined with really high gas price, that has just sent the uh, price of uh, wholesale electricity going shooting up. So the story of high gas prices has been covered quite a lot in the newspapers and it's quite a complex one. Um, in summary, we've got very low storage levels for gas at the moment and the reason for that is uh, caused by a multitude of uh, different factors. Um, we've got a really cold uh, uh, winter in Europe and North America and that just left uh, gas supplies much depleted at the end of that winter period in 2021. Um, the other thing we've got is a large backlog of maintenance uh, caused by uh, COVID. The other thing we've got is a lack of water in Asia and Brazil, which means their hydroelectric power schemes uh, aren't generating as much electricity. So that means that uh, gas customers have suddenly increased. So there's an awful lot more gas demands in the world now. So now that we're into the end of September, uh, what's happened to wind power? In the short term, the wind power has increased, um, but it hasn't increased sufficiently uh, to uh, knock down the uh, price of uh, electricity. Um, however, there have been a few windy moments and uh, those windy periods have knocked down the price of Octopus Agile. As you can see here on the 23rd of September, we had in the small hours of the morning, um, a dip in prices down to uh, 12 pence per kilowatt hour. These are the kind of opportunities that I am looking uh, to find going into winter time. As solar generation from my house draws down, I'm hoping that the wind power resources uh, ramp up. And it's these dips in uh, price that allow me to charge up my car at a much cheaper tariff compared to uh, the daytime uh, price of 35 pence per kilowatt hour. So what we can see on this graph 
is uh, an illustration of how the share of wind power has changed in September. It was very slack in the beginning of September. And gas uh, was responsible for over 45% of uh, our electricity demand. So we were essentially held hostage to the price of gas here. Um, but as you can see, into the end of September, the wind resources have uh, risen up quite a lot. Um, so now the dominance of gas uh, from our electricity mix is, is starting to be uh, weakened now. And I'm hoping that will result in uh, lower prices uh, going into the winter. What is the state of the future electricity mix in the UK. In terms of government policy, uh, they made a commitment to having 40 gigawatts of wind power by the year 2030. I think that's a gross underestimate. At the moment, we've got 24 gigawatts worth of uh, nameplate capacity in terms of uh, onshore and offshore wind power. Let's have a look at a database. This is called the Renewable Energy Planning Database. It is a government department called the BEIS. Uh, Business Energy Industrial Strategy is what it stands for. And we have got a CSV file. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so this database gives you a, a, a list of all the uh, uh, power plants which are in operation or uh, in the planning phase. And what we're going to do is do a little bit of uh, number crunching and we are going to look for wind power. And we want to look at all the things which are under construction and uh, in the planning phase in some ways. And we've got a nameplate capacity installed uh, that we can uh, uh, add up here. Let's have a look at that. So as you can see, um, we have got over 30 gigawatts of wind power in the planning process uh, as of today. That is a lot more than the 16 gigawatts of extra capacity that the government was uh, wanting to uh, aspire to have by the year 2030. Now, between now and 2030, there'll be even more wind turbine projects uh, going into the uh, planning database, no doubt. But uh, I want to have a look at another industry, this solar industry. So as you can see, we've only got six gigawatts of nameplate capacity in planning or in construction for solar power. Now this database only includes uh, systems which require planning permission. And those are typically uh, greater than 100 kilowatts. Let's have a look at this graph. Solar power only contributes 4% to the UK's electricity generation. And yet, in my own house, solar power is responsible for over 70% of my annual consumption. I'm not just talking about the summertime or the springtime, I'm talking about the whole year, 70%. Scaling that up, you can see there's a huge amount of potential for solar to uh, make a, a massive impact on our generation mix. So what is the case for solar power investment in the United Kingdom? As we've seen in the summertime, and particularly in the early autumn, we've allowed ourselves to be held hostage by gas prices. Now, Energy is a foundational industry in any economy. If energy prices are cheap, the economy can grow and it can flourish. The converse is also true. And right now, businesses have shut down because of these high gas prices. And there's even rumours that there could well be a sufficient shortage in the future to mandate a three-day working week. So it's got real potential to harm the economy, just allowing the status quo to continue. Solar power is a very seasonal counterbalance to wind power. You can invest 
plenty of money in wind power still, but it's never going to provide sufficient quantities of electricity during the summertime. And market forces right now, as I've demonstrated with my own solar panels, really strongly favour solar power investment. So the question I've been asking is, can you afford to invest in solar power on your own domestic rooftop and your own business? I covered that in detail in November. And the answer back then when electricity prices were a lot cheaper was, yes, you can afford to do so. Now, I think the question is, can you afford not to invest in solar power? And if you don't invest in solar power, you are essentially allowing yourself to be held hostage to the whims of gas prices that you have got no control over whatsoever. Now, if you don't have the money to invest in solar power in your bank account, there are options available. In Scotland, there is an interest-free loan available, which is provided by the Energy Savings Trust. The Energy Savings Trust provides £17,500 as an interest-free loan. It's known as the Home Energy Scotland loan. This can be repaid over 12 years, and there's an administration fee of £150. To qualify for this loan, you need to have an energy performance certificate, and that certificate needs to have solar power as a recommendation for improving the energy performance of your own home. So as we can see, anyone who owns a home has access to it. So of course, not everybody owns their own building. There are plenty of tenants, both private individuals and businesses, and they have no control over the installation of solar panels for their own benefit. That is down to the whims of their own landlords. So there really also needs to be government policy supporting the installation of solar panels so that these groups of uh, businesses and individuals can also benefit from uh, the uh, savings uh, that solar panels have to offer. Now, as mentioned in my previous September video, the Octopus Agile tariff is for very brave people going into autumn and winter time. I do have the option of switching over to the relative safety of the Octopus Go tariff, where I can pay five pence per kilowatt hour during four hours of each night. But in doing so, I do forfeit any revenue from surplus electricity generated from my solar panels. That said, I reckon there's two more weeks of surplus solar power to enjoy before I start needing to find cheap nighttime electricity rates. In the meantime, I'll be watching the weather and I'll be seeing what impact that has on the electricity prices. So my next solar video will be done in the middle of November. That's going to be to celebrate one year of generation from my solar panel array. In that video, I hope to present a roundup of the performance of my solar panels for the whole year. And I also want to evaluate how the economics have stacked up and evolved as the year has progressed. In the meantime, I'll be sure to post more hill walking and Tesla Model 3 videos. And I'm sure some of you will find those videos very interesting. So I would like to thank you all for watching and I'm going to talk to you again very soon.